That was a joke, of course. The only side effect that can occur is that you might get addicted to using blend ranges after watching this video. I'm going to share an interesting technique which works well with portrait photos, but the technique can be applied to any photo. Let me demonstrate it first with this image and later I will try to explain what is happening and how else we can use this technique. It only requires one adjustment and some blend range magic. I will add a channel mixer adjustment and double the reds in the red channel by setting the red slider to 200%. The image now looks super red of course. But check out what happens if I change the blend ranges of the green and the blue channel with a change in the master range. We get this very subtle red tint to our portrait image. To make the effect really stand out, I can change the blend mode to linear light, which adds a nice subtle contrast on top of the warm. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Here is another example where I have applied the same effect. Notice how it gets warmer when enabling the channel mixer layer. You can of course dim the overall effect by lowering the fill from the blend ranges dialog or lower the red tint by adjusting the channel mixer. So what is happening exactly and how can we utilize this technique with other images? To understand what is happening, let me switch to this test image. I'm going to add a curves layer which makes everything black by applying a flat curve. This way we can clearly see what is happening when we modify the blend range of this adjustment. The applied area will get black. Let's start with the red channel first. If I change the blend range, notice how the red colors are targeted. When I reset and apply the same for the green, it targets the greens only. The same happens when I apply the range to the blue channel. Now this is where it gets interesting. We can combine these channel layers. If I now modify the green channel range, notice what happens. It targets the mixture of green and blue, which is cyan. By adjusting the ranges, I can target more or less from both channels. So when I increase the green range, notice how it targets more of the higher green values with as a result eating more from the blue tints. The opposite will apply when I change the blue range. The more I include of the high blue values, the more of the green area gets targeted. Awesome! So let's go back to the first image and suppose we wanted to add more red to the green in the background. By changing the blue range as shown before, we can increase the reds in the greens. This also impacts our model. But as our model or the skin contains quite a bit of high red values, we can adjust the blend range in the red channel so it will not apply to the high red values. Pretty cool, isn't it? Let's use this landscape image as an example. Suppose we want to darken the sky a bit. The sky contains mostly blues, so I will add a curves adjustment to darken the image and then apply the blend range which targets the light blues. To help you understand which blend ranges and channels we need, let's temporarily switch back to our test image. We want to target this area, so let's start by targeting the blues by adjusting the blue channel. As we want the area between the green and the blue, Let's adjust the green range too. But I want a bit more of the blue color, so let's adjust the green range so more of the blues is selected. Awesome! Let's see what happens when we apply these settings to the curves adjustment we added to our landscape example. Awesome! Look at the sky and the water. As a side effect, it also affected the rocks in the middle. We can adjust the blue range so less of the darker blues will be targeted. Perfect. If I turn the adjustment on and off, you can clearly see how only the sky and the water is affected. Pretty amazing. What I want to do next is to make the effect of the sun stronger, which is predominantly yellow and red. Going back to our test image, let's adjust the red and the green channel ranges so that the yellow area is selected. 
Now that we know how the blend ranges should be set up, I can add another curves adjustment which darkens the image and apply these blend ranges and have a look at that. Most of the time you need to fine tune the blend ranges and the adjustments to get the look you're aiming for. The blend range channels are quite powerful and it will take some time to get a good feeling how they work. For example, we can also work the opposite way or in other words select everything which has no red color and then subtract the greens from them resulting in targeting mainly the blue colors. I hope this video has given you some insight in blend range channels and has inspired you to experiment with them. Thank you for watching again and until the next video.